the New York Times best-selling author, Marcus Susan. He said, I knew a guy and we worked together and he would crack a hard boiled egg on his head. And so now you know exactly where we're going. And I remember thinking as he left the house, this is going to be the best day of my life. <laughs> but you know when you do something like that, you're thinking, how great is this? And then all that morning, I had all that morning to think about it. And by 11 o'clock, I was just torn between this agony and ecstasy. There's the ecstasy of seeing him do it. But then there's the agony of what's going to happen afterwards. <laughs> by, by 11 o'clock, or quarter past 11, I cracked under the pressure and I went and I, I confessed what I'd done to my dad. <laughs> Again, don't worry. <laughs> and so I'm standing there, my dad's high up painting uh, some leaves, and he looks down. Now, my dad was always yelling at us at work, telling us to stop bludging or, or loafing around, stop throwing things at each other, and just to hurry up, okay? And, and so he looked down, he said, what are you doing here? You should be working. I said, oh, I've done something really bad. 
He came down the ladder, and he was used to me screwing things up at work, like spilling paint, or walking through dirt, and then walking through someone's new carpet, and <laughs> stuff like that. And so he said, all right, show me what you screwed up this time. I said, no, it's nothing like that. And he said, well, what is it? And that's when I got cold feet all over again. I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, I've stopped work, I've come down the ladder, you're going to tell me what you've done. And then I said, all right. I said, okay. I said, you know, Rob's two hard-boiled eggs, I've, I've replaced them with two raw eggs. And my dad looked at me and he put his paintbrush down and he shook his head and he said, son, that's brilliant. <laughs> Really read. His fingers touched the words. He told him about me. At first, Lisa could not talk. Perhaps it was the sudden bumpiness of love she felt for him, or had she always loved him? It's likely. Restricted as she was from speaking, she wanted him to kiss her. She wanted him to drag her hand and pull her over. It didn't matter where her mouth, her neck, her cheek, her skin was empty for it, waiting. Years ago, when they'd raced on a muddy field, Rudy was a hastily assembled set of bones with a jagged, rocky smile. In the trees this afternoon, he was a giver of bread and teddy bears. He was a triple Hitler Youth Athletics Champion. He was her best friend, and he was a month from his death. Of course I told him about you, Lisa said. She was saying goodbye. She didn't even know it. to share something that I wouldn't normally read with, with a group like you is really special to me. So, um, so thanks for that. Me, with flight delays and everything, it's my first stop in America, it took me about 36 hours to get there. And everywhere I looked, everywhere I looked, and you, it'd be the same way if you've ever traveled, if you've traveled recently by plane, everyone's plugged into something. And to see people sitting here with books in their lap, that's, that's made, not that it wouldn't have been worth it anyway, but it's made this even more worth it. So thanks very much.